Good morning, church. Are you happy to be in God's house this morning? Turn to your neighbor and tell them one good thing that has happened to you. to your other neighbor and just give them a big old smile, the biggest smile you can muster. Make it a little bit crazy. <laughs> you know, today is Mental Health Week, and one of the best things we can do for our mental health is to just smile. It instantly raises our mood. There is power in the blood. Won't you sing with us today? There is power in the blood. Having a God that we can trust with our burdens and our heartbreak is something that not a lot of other people have. People have a tendency of mistrust, if you know what I mean. You can, you can voice your concerns to somebody, but there's always that lingering doubt in your mind. They don't really care what, what I said. God always cares. He's always there for you. He is a healer in this place. He said if we believe, then greater things would come. So pour your spirit out like a river, like a flood. Deliver every heart 
body, soul, and mind. All the darkness bows before the feet of Christ. And this is how the chorus goes. The healer's in this place. The healer's in this place. Jesus, you are moving in our place. There's freedom in your name. There is freedom in your name. Jesus, you are healer in this place. Oh, your spirit, are come and let your will be done. You defeated death, you remain in our living hope. The blind see all your glory. Let the dead rise, testify it. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the morning turn to dancing. There is silence in our praising. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. The blind see all your glory, let the dead rise, testify. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the morning turn to dancing, there is silence in our praising. There is power in the mighty name of Jesus. There is power. God only 
it most glorious, the ancient of days. Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as night, nor wanting, nor wasting, the But not change at thee. Great Father of glory, your Father of light, thine angels adore thee, all failing their sight. All praise we would render. So, have you ever been down in the dumps and really just felt like there's no way to move forward? There's this unique idea in the Bible that we are alive through Christ and not of ourselves. Have faith in Him. Talk to Him. He'll guide you through it.
wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the This is the time when we'll call you forward to the garden of prayer for your supplications, your needs, and your wants. And I would call forward the person who will be praying for us today. Heavenly Father, indeed you are great God. Indeed you created us. You have given us this opportunity to be your children. Thank you, God, for being our true God. We give thanks to you for giving us Jesus so that we know that she lived for his suffering. At this moment, Lord, we all came before you, those who are here and those who are far on the line. We are all before you. Lord, forgive us all what we have done wrong. At this moment, Lord, we ask you with your promised helper. Your Holy Spirit, Lord, be with everyone who is here and who are far. Fill them so that we understand who you are. Lord, at this moment, as your children came to you, fill them. Take all their burden. Indeed, we fix our eyes on you, Baba. We have no other way. Is you. Lord, we trust in you. We believe in you. At this moment, Baba, all those who are here and afar, they have burden. They are going to pause to you, listen to their cry. Here we are. Thank you, Lord, for listening and answering our prayer. Among us all, they are sick, in the hospital, in their houses. You are the healer. Be with everyone. Lord, as we are entering to the sermon, the speaker who is going to speak, let him be your vessel. Fill him with your spirit so that whatever he aired, let it be from you. And take all those who are here, open their heart so that they take and listen and use it to bless your name. Thank you, Baba, for answering our prayer. Remember us all in this day, in Jesus' name we pray.
wonderful to see all of you here today. How was your week? Good, great, God is good. Okay, well today your story is about four of the, my favorite people in the Bible. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and what's his name? Bendigo. Uh, Bendigo, yes, you got it, okay. Daniel did not want to eat the king's rich food and wine because it would make him unclean. So he asked Ashpenaz for permission not to make himself unclean in this way. God caused Ashpenaz, the king in charge of the officials, to be kind and loyal to Daniel. But Ashpenaz told Daniel, I am afraid of my master, the king. He ordered me to give you this food and drink. If you don't eat this food, you will begin to look weak and sick. You will look worse than any other young men your age. The king will see this, and he will become angry with me. He might cut off my head, and it would be your fault. Then Daniel talked to the guard who had been in, put in charge of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He said, please give us this test. For 10 days, don't give us anything but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then after 10 days, compare us with the other young men who eat the king's food. See for yourself who looks healthier, and then decide how you want to treat us, your servants. So the guard agreed to test Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego for 10 days. After 10 days, Daniel and his friends looked healthier than all the young men who ate the king's food. So the guard continued to take away the king's special food and wine and to only give vegetables to Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. God gave these four young men the wisdom and ability to learn many different kinds of writing and science. Daniel could also understand all kinds of visions and dreams. At the end of the three years of training, Ashpenaz brought all the young men to King Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked to them and found that none of the young men were as good as Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these four young men became the king's servants. Every time the king asked them about something important, they showed great wisdom and understanding. The king found they were 10 times better than all the magicians and wise men in his kingdom. Okay, so boys and girls, why do you think that these boys were 10 times better? Because they ate what? The king's fruits and vegetables and drank a lot of water and milk. Very well, they ate a lot of vegetables, and healthy food, okay? And do you know, boys and girls, Jesus wants us to be in good health. Third John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospereth. Okay, so... Boys and girls, when your parents tell you to turn off that device and that TV and go outside and get fresh air and exercise, they want you to be in good health and prosper. When they tell you to go to bed on time, they want you to be in good health and prosper. When they prepare a healthy meal for you, full of wonderful vegetables, they want you to prosper and be in good health. Who wants to prosper and be in good health? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> okay. Can I have a volunteer for prayer? Okay. Come. <laughs> oh. You 
both? You both want to pray? Come. You can both pray. That's fine. He'll go first. Okay, go ahead. Please bow your heads and close your eyes for prayer. Heavenly Father, please make us have a good day as we're being good and we're being trying to be kind and being nice. In only Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God, thank you so much for this day. Bless everybody that's sick when they got to a car accident. Make sure they get better. And in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, I'm going to pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this Sabbath day where we can come and worship you and praise your holy name. Thank you for all the children here today. Please help them to follow your word and do what's pleasing and right in your sight. Amen. Okay, boys and girls, please go back to your seat. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. Our offering today is for our, lo for our local Ontario Conference advance. And our advance is helps the Ontario Conference plan for, um, big, uh, for not only events, but it also helps with our schools. It also helps with uh, Camp Frenda and also other ministries that the Ontario Conference has. So um, we want to ask the deacons to please come forward as well as the, um, the children, for they will be collecting the lambs offering that comes um, to our church school. May we please bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity to worship you in our offerings and in our tithes. Lord, have, we thank you so much for the blessings that you've given to us. We thank you for our pastors who are it was such a blessing to this congregation. We ask that you please be with them in a special way. Lord, we ask that you please uh, bless this offerings and our ties, dear Lord, and may it enhance the work here in Windsor and especially in our Ontario Conference. We thank you in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Amen. We worship God with our tithe and offerings because it is also a way to support the ministry of those who are dedicating their lives to the work of God. The books of Moses mention two special groups of spiritual leaders and how they were sustained. We read in Numbers 18 verse 2, Bring your fellow Levites from your ancestral tribe to join you and assist you when you and your sons minister before the tent of the covenant law. This chapter reviews the tasks assigned to priests and Levites. Priests were assigned to the altar and inside the tabernacle. Levites were to take care of everything else regarding the tabernacle. Each group had specific and exclusive responsibilities, although Israel as a whole was a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Their ministry brought spiritual blessings. How were they sustained in their needs, you might ask? God told Aaron, All the holy offerings the Israelites give me I give to you and your sons as your portion. The Lord also told him, I give to the Levites as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. By establishing the storehouse system, God gave the holy offerings that were his to the priests and his holy tithe to all the Levites. This transfer of resources was a means used by God to support the spiritual leaders in ancient Israel ensuring that religious education and the service of the tabernacle would not be discontinued. This provision was connected to the fact that their important ministries required total dedication. Both Jesus and Paul considered that the same principle should apply to support the appointed spiritual leaders of the church. Pastors and other spiritual leaders are a source of blessings. Do my tithe and offerings pay for them? The answer is no. Tithe and offerings once returned become his property, which he disposes as he wills. Even though given to God in an act of worship, one good additional reason to give is in order to partner with God to support the essential work of ministry. 
As we worship with our tithe and regular offerings, called Promise, we enjoy the privilege of participating in God's saving mission. May we put our desires last and God first. May we stand for the reading of uh, God's word. Today's scripture reading is taken from Exodus 15, verse 23 to 27. I'll be reading from the New International Version. When they came to Marah, they could not drink its water because it was bitter. That is why the place is called Marah. So the people grumbled against Moses, saying, What are we to drink? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. He threw it into the water, and the water became sweet. There the Lord made a decree and a law for them, and there he tested them. He said, If you listen carefully to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what is right in his eyes, if you pay attention to his commands and keep all his decrees, I will not bring on you any of the diseases I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. Then they came to Elam, where they were twelve springs and seventy palm trees, and they camped there near the water. May the Lord add his blessing to his reading of his word. Good morning, church, and happy Sabbath. Um, it is my privilege this morning to introduce the speaker for today. Um, his name is Pastor or Dr. Daniel So. He's an ordained minister and has served for 20 years in pastoral ministry over seven churches. He has a bachelor's in health sciences, a master's of divinity in pastoral ministry and counseling. Um, he has a Master's of Public Health in Health Promotion and Behavioral Change and a PhD in Psychotherapy, Spiritual Care and Human Relations and is a registered psychotherapist here in Ontario. He is also the Health Ministries Coordinator for the Adventist Church in Canada. And lastly, but not least, he currently serves as the Programs Manager for ADRA here in Canada as well. Dr. So, welcome to Windsor. We are glad that you're here. After special music, the next voice you will, you will hear will be of Dr. So. Thank you.
Wherever there is war, there is hunger. The war in Ukraine has halted farming, disrupted supply chains, frozen assets, and destroyed livelihoods. People who were once successful professionals now cannot afford enough food to feed their families. The World Food Program estimates that one in three people in Ukraine don't have access to enough food. The recent escalation of drone attacks are making access to food even more challenging. ADRA Canada has been responding in Ukraine since the onset of the war. ADRA staff and volunteers are on the front lines delivering food. Our Justice at the Table campaign will enable us to continue responding into next year, meeting the real needs on the ground. Please give generously today. Thank you for your support. morning to the Windsor Church family. A very happy Sabbath to you on the Lord's Day. I want to thank all the participants for their contribution to worship today and the special music by the sisters. And of course, I see some familiar faces in this place. You just saw the Adra video. And on behalf of our executive director, Steve Matthews, and our entire staff, whom you have one right in your congregation here, none other than Max. Uh, he's right there, and uh, thank you for being here. We bring you greetings, and I want to thank you so much for your support. We are very happy to partner with the Windsor Church, and uh, I know that uh, they have the church has been active in the Ukrainian response, and there are a few families that have been supported, so we're very grateful that we can partner with the Windsor Church. Uh, and hopefully later on I'll meet that family if they're here today. It's great to see your smiling faces. It's wonderful to be in the house of God. If you're happy to be alive and you know it, would you say amen? Amen. amen. It's great to be in God's house today. We can worship together. Just a few years ago, a couple, just a couple years ago, just a couple, two years ago, we had a very difficult period during the pandemic. And of course it forced us to stay isolated and quarantined, and we couldn't worship and gather the way we are today. So we have to be thankful to God that he has allowed us to come together again. God never intended it for us to worship in isolation or to be in isolation or to live in isolation or separation. As you can see on the screen and the video, I we hope that you would be very much supportive of our Adra Ministry Campaign, Justice at the Table. Do we have our Adra Ambassador here by any chance? Adra Ambassador, if, you just, if you're here, just wave your hand. Not sure if we have identified one, but uh, we'll be working on it. We surely will be working on it. And we certainly, uh, we have, of course, Max here, so he's a great go-to and resource. We want to continue to ask you to pray for this campaign. There's more information. If you can please go to our website, adra.ca backslash hunger, you'll see we're trying to raise uh, quite a substantial amount of money without going into details. We want to solicit your support. We ask that you would help us in this powerful ministry. We are addressing the global issue and also right here in Canada, uh, the global issue and even issue of hunger right in our, right in our doorsteps in our backyard. I serve as the national program lead and what we're finding is that there's so much hunger needs in remote areas, in First Nation indigenous communities. And so we don't have to go too far. So we solicit your prayers and your support of the Ministry of ADRA. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for support, your support and giving to this worthy cause. ADRA is the church, your church's humanitarian arm and agency. And we need to finish this work together through the proclamation of God's word, but also through the ministries of compassion and meeting 
the people where they are. That's what Jesus did. He met people at the point of need. So, without further ado and delay, I'd like to speak to you on the subject entitled, What the Health is Going On? Now, there's a little jingle to that, but uh, allow your sanctified imaginations to stay focused on God's Word. What the health is going on in the church? And so, I'm honored to be here with you all today to spend this day, and I pray that our experience will be, today will be uplifting and encouraging and inspiring. Let us pray as we open God's word together. Loving Lord Jesus, thank you for the privilege of coming together in the house of God and the house of prayer for all people. Thank you for the rich worship today. Thank you for the songs, the prayers, the reading of scripture, the special music, the time of study. And now as we come to receive your word, remove every distraction that you alone will be our main attraction May Jesus be seen, be heard and lifted up alone, and may we all be drawn closer to you, through you, for you, and because of you. And may we all say it was great to be in the house of God today is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen and amen. What the health is going on in the church? That's the big question. Now, I like to move around a bit, so you'll forgive me, but I like to, of course, engage. I like to come a little closer. Um, Yes, this is a nice support right here, but I don't want to use it as my crutch. But I like to move around a little bit. So that's the big question. And today's emphasis is on health. Health, and this afternoon we'll be talking about mental health and foods and your moods and how they can enhance your wellness, well-being, and mental health overall. But today we're talking about this very uh, critical matter, this very imperative subject, what the health is going on in the church. Well, let's talk about it some more. So as you can see, we live in a world that is rapidly changing. Our world is vastly in disarray. We see a world with issues such as global climate change. We see pollution increasing. We see uh, the melting of the glaciers. We see so much uh, disruption in our world today, in the environmental world, in the political world, in the physical world, in the, of course, economic uh, and spiritual realms. What is going on? The health of our world is being severely impacted. It doesn't seem to be getting better. As you can see here, this is a quick slide. I know it might be very um, difficult for you to see, but this just gives you an overview of the areas that are being affected around the world. We call this the impact of climate change on human health. So as you can see, there is the atmospheric air that we're breathing, um, nutrition, agriculture. It's a full circle, as you can see on the screen. So much is happening in our world that's being impacted by the global shifts and changes and undercurrents that are taking place in our world. There used to be this show growing up, I don't want to date myself, but I was a child, it was called, What Will They Think of Next?, have you heard of that one? And uh, I don't know if you remember that. Some of you may, may not. But the narrator and the host of the show was talking about new inventions, but also talking about current trends, what's taking place in our world today, and how will we be able to address them? How will we be able to meet them? Will we be able to survive? It's a big question. So as you can see, this, is, this concerns all of us. Because we are a product of our environment. And so as believers, as Advent Christians, as human citizens, global citizens of this world, do we have a responsibility? Do we have a responsibility as stewards to do something about this? You better believe it. We can't just sit here and just expect nothing to be done or remain passive. We have to be proactive. There's something that we need to do. In fact, at ADRA... Um, Max will tell you, you know, we have an initiative addressing climate change, right? And part of it is, of course, addressing hunger and, of course, agricultural needs, meeting people at their point of need, but also how can we reduce, of course, our carbon footprint? How can we promote more sustainable ways of living right across the board? Now, of course, someone might say, well, we know this is coming to the end and uh, God is going to come to make all things new. 
I believe that. Amen. Wholeheartedly. This is what I believe. This is what we believe. But until then, it doesn't mean that we just allow things to deteriorate or just not say something or, or be a voice or promote justice or address inequities because the Bible and God has given us a responsibility for the care of His creation. So what does health have to do with it and what the health is going on? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Stay with me on the journey. So as you can see, this is very interesting. Did you know this, that in the 19th, uh, the earliest data from the 1900, check it out right here, from the 1900, you're seeing here that the major conditions that existed, check it out, you had earliest data on influenza, pneumonia, tuberculosis, diarrhea, enteritis, heart disease, stroke, kidney disease, accidents, cancer, senility, and diphtheria as the leading causes of death at the turn of the 20th century here, the 1900s. Has anything changed since then? Well, so let's take a look. Let's keep going. So here we see the biggest health concern of the 21st century is what we call the obesity epidemic. This has come out here. It has, of course, gained a lot of traction and attention Although obesity is a major issue, physical activity may be also very much attached to that. But let's keep going. Furthermore, what we see is the four major NCDs. Now, your pastor, I'm grateful to your pastor, a longtime friend, and I'm grateful for allowing uh, me to speak at his pulpit. And of course, thank you, Sister Sandra, for the invitation to be here with you all today. He's doing something called natural church development. But here, NCDs is non-communicable diseases. And here it is, the top four, the four major top, or shall we say, primary non-communicable diseases. Here, we can see here is cardiovascular disease. Then, of course, you have cancers. Then you have, of course, chronic respiratory diseases, deaths, and diabetes. So has much changed since then. What do you think? We still have major respiratory and chronic diseases, disorders, conditions. We just had COVID-19. We still have it. We're not out of the woods yet. But we survived, the, shall we say, the concentrated time when it was prevalent. So we see that not much has changed. But, but it's very interesting, though. You'll notice a trend here. And this is, I'm going somewhere for today's message. I'm going somewhere. Check it out. How many of you have seen this documentary? <laughs> Super size me. I'm not, you know, I'm not promoting. I'm not saying that you should go watch it. But if you have time, if you wanted to think about, you know, what's happening in the world. This is an interesting uh, documentary by Morgan uh, Spurlock. And he actually confronted the American uh, public with what most of us suspected as, of course, about fast food. It's detrimental to our human health, right? So his experiment was... Uh, one month of eating nothing but foods from the McDonald's menu dramatically revealed the toll that fast food takes on the body. Uh, you can see films like this has sent a seismic shockwave throughout America and through the fast food industry and all that. Of course, after that, McDonald's and other fast food chains um, launched uh, healthy menus. So they included, started eating, uh, they had mixed salads and, of course, these clementines. And they tried to go healthier with these smoothies and all of that, of course, because that was going to hit and hurt their bottom dollar. So they had to change something, right? They had to change their menu rapidly. So it's very interesting. And, of course, we realized that this gentleman who did the experiment, he was suffering with um, high cholesterol, um, high blood pressure, Absolutely. In one month, one month, supersize. And he ate this fast food diet. So something happens and it correlates with our diet. What we are observing here is this. Check this out on this slide. You can see that this, uh, these are the major trends of disease in global uh, mortality. You see cardiovascular diseases, cancers, chronic respiratory diseases, you see diabetes, other non-communicable diseases, and of course injuries and nutritional. So what is the bottom line? What is the conclusion of the matter? Enough about all the stats. You might be wondering, okay, that's enough. Tell me, what the hell is going on? You ready for the answer? What we see here 
largely. Brothers and sisters, my friends, listening friends, online viewers, we welcome you and thank you for tuning in, live and also in the archive. What we see here is a lifestyle disease. Lifestyle primarily influences and contributes to these conditions. Are you seeing the trend here? Are these conditions somewhat preventable? Are they somewhat avoidable? What can you and I do to prevent these things? We have a responsibility. We have a personal responsibility. We have a collective responsibility. And as a church, we've always believed this. But somehow, we kind of missed the boat on it. We dropped the ball on this. This used to be, and still is, our message, but we have lost because it all ties in. It all weaves together. You have to see the big picture. So what does health have to do with it? That's a corollary question. That's the parallel question to the first question, what the health is going on. And this is what we want to explore together. So, so what, what the hell is going on in the church? Well, can I just break it down for you a little bit? Sorry to step on anybody's toes and bowl down your alley this afternoon, this day, but here it is. Did you know that the trends is this laissez-faire attitude in church? You know, this lukewarm temperature that's experiencing in the church. We got non-committal positions. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't want to do this. You know, the same um, 80% of the members doing 20, uh, you know, wait, 80%, no, no, 20% of the members doing 80% of the church or 100% of the church work. Then you have spiritual apathy. That's affecting the church. It's infected the church. Infected low spiritual immunity. Am I talking to somebody here today? Everyone's nice and quiet. Lack and little prayer power. Low scriptural diet. I would almost say malnut spiritual malnutrition. And comatose and diabetic Christians. That's when you hear sugar-coated messages. That's what causes spiritual diabetes. We're so comfortable. Pasted on our pews. We've become gospel-hardened. We've become so fat on the spiritual food, obese. Am I talking to somebody here today? All right, so what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? Well, I know your pastor preaches great messages. He's a scholar, resident and scholar, and a, a very, very good preacher and, and Bible student of God's Word. But this is the general trend that's existing in our world, in our church today. World over, you go anywhere else, any other church you visit, and we're seeing this trend kind of not only just creeping in, but it is enshrouding, it's becoming more prevalent, it, is, has, has, it has infected, it's contagious. And I think two things happened during the pandemic. During the pandemic period, either it drew you closer to God, or it drove you or drifted you away from God. What did it do for you, my brothers and sisters and listening friends? My prayer, my hope is that during the pandemic, you realized many things. It perhaps, hopefully, was a spiritual reawakening in your life to say, you know what? My life, without warning, I know people, friends, that, that, that of course, were infected, that actually died from this COVID, from this virus. It realized the brev I realized the brevity of life. I realized that things can happen without warning. And so... How we order our lives, what we do is so important. And we have to value that and say, Lord, thank you for giving me another day. Thank you for another day of life. Thank you for giving me the privilege to be alive. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you, to represent you, to witness for you, to show and to share your love with others in a world that is perishing in darkness. So what the health is going on in the church? Well, I just kind of share that with you a little bit. So what are we going to do about it? Well, let's keep going. Did you know this? That, of course, the evening of June 5th, 1983, 63, in the house of A. Hilliard, Ostego, Michigan. What we see here is that in the United States, of course, Ellen White received a vision on the great subject of health reform. I don't know if you remember that. And about 30 miles from Battle Creek to support the evangelistic series of M.E. Cornell and R.J. Lawrence. What continued was that they stopped at this family's home and at sunset, a number of believers gathered together, as you can see, and to welcome the Sabbath. Ellen White uh, was asked to offer the opening Sabbath prayer during which she received a 45-minute vision. You know where I'm going with that. Some of you 
Why am I sharing this with you? Because today is a very significant day. A very significant day in the history and heritage of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Today is October 22nd, 2022. Amen? Powerful. 2222. Look at that. Coincidence? Well, it's wonderful that we can celebrate because we know what happened on October 22nd, 1844. We're not celebrating the great disappointment, but remember what happened in our church history. It was a very dif disappointing time. It was a very discouraging time. But out of the ashes, out of that great disappointment came God's renewed vision and his divine appointment for his church, this movement of destiny, which we are all a part of. You see, if we don't remember where we're coming from, it's very difficult to know where you're going. Former Prime Minister and British statesman Sir Winston Churchill once remarked, the farther backward you can look, the farther forward you can see. And so when we understand our heritage, our history, our roots, it informs us, it inspires us, it almost instructs us in the way forward. But if we have no connection with that past, it's very difficult to understand who we are, almost like encountering an identity crisis. And that's why it's good to take a walk down memory's lane. So October 22nd, yes, it's today. And that's one of the reasons why I'm inserting a little historical note here for a message. Something happened in 1863. She was given a comprehensive health vision on health reform on the health message. I was shown that some things in regard to my husband and myself concerning her health, it appears that the impact of the vision evoked in her mind ex in inclusively holistic, a holistic uh, view of the Sabbath experience. I like that. I really like that because, you know, on this day, on this sacred day, it's a day of healing. It's a day of restoration. It's a day of God bringing back balance to our lives. That's what it's about. And so this is what we remember here. If you see, she had this uh, amazing vision. And something happened. She was taken into vision. And we continue on. And her second counsel was on health. Practical lessons on health. James was struggling with depression, her husband, resulting from overwork. Some, someone can identify with that, right? We overwork. Thank God for Sabbath. I don't know what I would do without Sabbath. I'm really grateful for the gift of the Sabbath. You know, of course, sometimes Sabbath could be long and, and drawn out, and there are times when there's so much is going on in the church. But, and then, of course, I think this pandemic has made people feel, oh, I have a visitor um, here from nature. And uh, some, the pandemic has kind of made people feel comfortable, and, and a lot of people still want to stay at home and stay at, stay at home and go to church on Zoom or visit different churches, kind of straddle on Zoom and all that. But you know what? There is a unique blessing when we come together physically. You know, when we are able to smile and see each other's faces, when we're able to shake each other's hands, give each other a hug. It is therapeutic. It's healing. And that's God's ideal for us. So don't stay away. Come to church. It's a good thing. It's good for your health. So James struggled with this depression, uh, listening and friends, brothers and sisters. And God provided a case study demonstrating what matters to him most. Ellen White wrote, I saw that now we should take special care of the health God has given us. Are you seeing this? For our work was not yet done. And uh, it says Satan was preserving in his efforts to do what? To destroy our usefulness. She continues, it, it is, is it possible to assume that overactivity contributes to a, a lack of usefulness and tiredness impacts the health of interpersonal relationships? It sure does. I saw we neither understood the depth and keenness of the heart trials of the other. Continues, the timing of this vision drew attention to the key elements necessary for human well-being, namely uh, time and relationships. Sabbath, a time out with God, provided a space for personal, here, relational healing, a time for celebration, and a renewal of spiritual vitality. We need it. God restored, rested on this day from all His creative activity to celebrate a relational togetherness with His creation. Can I talk to you about something? 
what the health is going on in the church. Why am I sharing this with you? I want you to understand this in the context of living in the last days. I want you to understand this message in the context of where we are in the stream of time. This message that God has entrusted His church is a glorious message. It is a message to bring light, to illuminate the darkness in this world and the way we portray, the way we proclaim, the way we present it can of course be tasteful, appealing, palatable, or it can be disgusting and cause people to reject it. So much research, and I don't have time to go into it today because time is of the essence, so much research in the body of literature, scientific literature, has been conducted that actually corroborates and produces and substantial evidence for the benefits, therapeutic benefits of Sabbath and Sabbath keeping. It's amazing. And you can research it. There's a whole lot on there. But it was amazing that over a hundred plus years, God had given this message, this insight to our pioneers, in particular Ellen White and the other pioneers of our church. And it was through this time they created this series called Health and How to Live. And of course, you know the story of Battle Creek Sanitarium. What did you all have for breakfast this morning? Did you have cereal this morning? No cereal? Did you skip breakfast? Okay, a lot of cereals, you have the big K, you remember? Kellogg's, right? And oftentimes, that's a great conversation starter for me when I'm traveling or speaking with people. And so we know the story of Kellogg's, that Venice heritage with Kellogg's at Battle Creek Sanitarium. Certainly, we know that he started out very inspired, brilliant man, ahead of his time with the many inventions, of course, health techniques, health interventions, dietary and food uh, interventions of promoting a plant-based diet. We had this message. We had it as a part of, we call it, the right arm of the gospel. But what has happened? It seems as if the right arm has been severed or it has been withered or it's withering. And we've got to restore the right arm. It was never meant to be, you know, an appendage. It was meant to accompany, complement the proclamation of the everlasting gospel. Part of the everlasting gospel has to do with health. What do you mean by that? When we talk about health, we're talking about the whole person. God came to make us whole. The motto of Loma Linda is to make man whole. Man in a generic sense, including women and boys and girls. So if the gospel that we preach does not help to make people whole, something's wrong. If it's just all uh, cerebral, theoretical, doctrinal information and knowledge, but it does not apply to the healing of mind, body, and spirit, something is wrong. Can I get a witness? This message is so unique. I have searched, I've talked to so many other colleagues in different, of course, faiths and, and persuasions and, 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 and religious orientations, and it is so unique that God has given us this message, and if we used it well and rightly, it would further the cause of not only the gospel, but for healing humanity. When we talked about the work that Andrew does and all, it's all connected. It has to do with health, the health of the environment, the health of the individual, the health of our family, the health of society. And if we see it holistically with that perspective, then it really fuels and motivates the work that we do here as a church. We can't work in silos and, and, and dichotomize the gospel. The gospel is everlasting, everlasting and whole. And that's what God wants us to do. So as you can see, I'm just getting off the beaten path a little bit because I get very passionate about this. I want to take you to a case study in Scripture, and we'll come to make a reference on the Scripture reading which we read, which was read for us by Dr. Costello. Thank you so much. So, you remember this wonderful story in Daniel chapter 1. Here's a case study for us. Check it out. Case study here. So you know the story in Daniel chapter 1, uh, verse 8, and I believe this is the amplified version. So it says here, but Daniel, Daniel made up his mind that he would not do what? defile or taint dishonor himself with what? The king's finest food or with the wine which the king drank. And he asked 
the commander of the officials that he might be excused so that he would not defile himself. In other words, he would not accept and adopt the Babylonian diet and also lifestyle. We can see God had given him from a child through his parents, his four parents, forefathers, his history. He was trained, he was exposed to the, a certain lifestyle and diet. And now he has been taken as a POW, but has been honored in the king's court, exiled far from home. And it was easy for him. And, of course, we know his three comrades or buddies or colleagues or fellow brothers here. And they could have easily just tried to compromise, say, God will forgive me. Um, it's okay. You know what? Uh, God will understand. Um, I'm far from home. We'll just sample the Babylonian diet and, and practice their lifestyle. And imagine if they did that. What would have been their witness to the most powerful nation of the then known world? Would they have blown their witness? Could it be that God places you and I just where He wants us to be in our sphere of influence, at work, at school, wherever you are, God places you in that circle of influence, your friends, to be a witness for the kingdom of God. But then, we are challenged, we are tempted to, you know what, well, no one's looking right now. Maybe I could just, you know, take an inch. And as they say, if you give the devil an inch, he'll take a yard. So don't even entertain that thought. Perish that thought. Stand firm on your faith. Ask God to strengthen you. And if you ask Him, and if you take that stand and make the decision, He will reinforce that willpower. He will stand up for you when you stand up for Him. It's the truth. So the case study continues in Scripture. You know this wonderful story of Daniel. Now God granted Daniel, I love this word. What does it say? Favor. You want the favor of God? Walk in His Word. Do His will. God will grant you favor in the eyes of those who seem to be against you and say, oh, who are these uh, weird, peculiar, quack people? Why, why are they always taking off seven day? Why are they always leaving before seven? What? That's okay. Show them through your example the love of God. Through your lifestyle, you point them to the Savior of the world, the God of your salvation, which can also be theirs. Daniel, the Bible says, God granted favor and compassion in the sight of the commander and the officials. And it continues, of course, his other fellow brothers, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But here are some questions I want to I wanna put to you. I want to posit to you this day. The first one is, what was his and their history? Well, I told you about it, right? Where they were coming from. They had a particular lifestyle and diet. They chose not to compromise it. How many times, and I'm also, I'll speak to myself first, I'm first. How many times have we compromised? How many times have we blown our witness? How many times have we failed in our faith? God is merciful. He's gracious. He's long-suffering. I have, but thanks be to God. There is mercy with the Lord. So we know what their history was. Then the next question was, what was their diet. Well, we know what their diet was. It was a plant-based diet. They were not going to subscribe to the diet, the Babylonian diet. I mean, look at our world today. I just showed you in the introductory slides, uh, Super Size Me and the fast food diet. I mean, come on. I mean, growing up, I used to remember, I, I remember, of course, loving, you know, the bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. Mm, mm, mm. I have to tell you a quick story. Time always runs out. I'm never out of time. I'm never out of uh, sermon. I'm just sometimes out of time. But let's, let's just try to move on this. When I was younger, I had an experience. My aunt, who was living in California, who worked as a nurse, a missionary in at Loma Linda for over 45 plus years, she was visiting when I was younger here in Toronto. I, was, I grew up in Toronto. And, um, you know, I used to like you know, hamburgers from McDonald's and, you know, the fast food and the french fries. I was, I was a child, you know. You have to excuse my ignorance. And so she always, 
promoted a plant-based diet. Now, we weren't big, you know, uh, you know, meat eaters and all, but we liked it. And coming from a Caribbean background and history, uh, heritage, you know, the food is very tasty and um, very appealing. Nonetheless, that day, my father was working and um, he said, if I behave myself and I did some work, he'll treat me. So he brought home this nice brown bag. And of course, you know, that brown bag was smelling really good. And I'm giving you the cold notes version of it. So lunchtime came and I was ready. I was going into the kitchen and I was barred from the kitchen. Uh, it, it was almost like I couldn't cross the border. And I started to, of course, protest. I was just four years old. I protested. I wanted that brown bag because it had the hamburger and the fries in there. And of course, the hamburger was a beef ham. And my aunt wanted to teach me a lesson. She said, if I don't curb my nephew's, this young man's diet now, he's gonna, it's going to get worse. Well, lo and behold, she withheld the brown bag from me. That day, there was protest. There was, as the Bible says, weeping and gnashing of teeth. And uh, I was just four. And you know what I did? I ran to my room because one thing I remembered for, from a child was always to pray. They taught me to pray. So I was, and I, I'm sorry I didn't include it on this slide. It's an old picture. I wish I did. But Jess, you have, you're going to have to visualize. I went to my room, knelt down on my knees, and started to pray fervently like Daniel because my first name is Daniel. And I prayed. And I asked the Lord, please send my auntie back to Loma Limba. That's, I couldn't pronounce it right. And, and, and she came and caught a picture of me with a Polaroid. And I'm sorry I couldn't get it. To, but it was there. It was, it was, and I prayed. And you know what? That day I, I locked myself to, to almost fast and pray. Well, I was fasting because I didn't get that. Because that's what I wanted. And I didn't want anything else. So it turned out to be a fast and a prayer session. And in the evening when I sat and done and they said, you know, you need to eat and all that. And they sat me down. And I was a little bit more calm. And she explained everything. And then she prayed with me and said, this is why I did this. And I was four years old, and, you know, I, I couldn't process everything, but I understood it in my child's mind at that time. But from that day forward, I never touched another hamburger. And, I mean, today I live to tell the story, and I realized, you know, um, a lot of things that I missed that perhaps wasn't good for me. And I'm thankful for that. And I just wanted to share that with you. And it's so important because it starts from young, right? And she curbed that, that, that craving as it were. You know, I, I didn't, at the time, of course, I didn't give up all the meat. I still ate chicken and all that. But years later, and it's been 20, maybe, shall we say 25 years now, I've been on a plant-based diet. So I'm grateful to God for the early lessons learned. But here's a question, and here's a comment. They tried to change three important fundamental aspects of their human rights, freedom of conscience issues. Why am I going here? Because I want you to understand that the question, what does health got to do with it? So we started off with what the health is going on in the church. So we kind of covered that question. But the bigger, the larger, the more overarching question is, what does health have to do with it? Because we often think, oh, we're going to have a health ministries day once a year. And that's all the health ministry we do. Okay, maybe we'll do a cooking class, you know, a little bit here, and we'll have a little. It's more than that. It's more than a program. It's a lifestyle. It's a part of the fabric of this church, and it's fundamental and foundational to the everlasting gospel. Now, you see, I'm getting very passionate because I believe this with all my heart because it's the truth, and we have somehow um, dichotomized and divorced it from all the other ministries, this is a collective part. This is an integrative part of the everlasting gospel. Why is it so important? Well, I'm, I'm so glad you asked. I want you to see it. Here we go. Three things happen. They try to change their lifestyle. They try to change their diet. And they also try to change their names, their character, and their devotion, and a loyalty, and allegiance to the God of heaven. Okay, you're not seeing what I'm saying. You're sleeping. Okay, I'm going to land the plane very shortly. But I'm hoping that you're following with me. Are you getting it? Are you seeing the big picture? You're thinking that, okay, well, health is not about tofu and veggie nuggets and prime steaks and, and broccoli. That, that's, that, that's, a, that's just a little piece of it. 
It's much more than that. You have to understand the, the breadth, the comprehensiveness of it. It is much more than meets the eye. Understand what does health have to do with it? Well, this is it right here. If Daniel and his three colleagues, fellow brothers, compromise in their lifestyle, in their diet, do you think that God's mission and purpose would have been compromised, even aborted? Maybe God, of course, also has a master plan. He may have used some others. But God chose to use these young people who made themselves available to the will and purpose of God. And just because of their lifestyle and their influence, they were able to exert such a godly influence on the most powerful kingdom of the world then that changed the course of human history. Four people made four decisions that changed the trajectory and the destiny of this world. Four. How about your decision today? You think your decision is, is just one drop in the bucket? Not with God. Not with God. When you make a decision for God and you are, you're backed up against a wall and when you are marginalized and when you're put under the spotlight and scrutiny but you stand up for God he will stand up for you see they try to change their names and I don't have the time to go into all the details now but they were given Hebrew names Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego if you go back to the scriptures in Daniel chapter 1 I would like to take you there but because of time I can't they assigned them three Babylonian names these were God, names of gods that they worship, not the, not the God of the heaven, the God of earthly gods, wood and stone. They gave them pagan names. Here's a beautiful message emerging from this wonderful story. They tried to change their names, which they did assign them, but they couldn't change their characters because they were resolved, purposed, determined, resigned in their hearts to follow the word and will of God. Can you imagine the heat and pressure they were under? And what do you talk about human rights? What's that? Human rights, they're trying to change their worship. They wanted them to worship the gods of Babylon. But they said no. You see, what does health have to do with it? You've got to understand. And even, I'm not trying to make a direct implication, but I want you to understand that even during the pandemic, there were human rights that were being violated, that were being affected. I mean, can you imagine? Yes, I'm, I'm, I have a public health background, and I believe in good public health campaigns and good vaccinations, but can you imagine during the pandemic, the church was closed. You couldn't even worship. Is that a, is that a human right issue? Is, is that freedom of conscience issue? Is that a religious liberty issue? You better believe it. You better believe it. Could it be that God sent us a handwriting on the wall to prepare us for what is soon about to take place. Let's not be sleeping, brothers and sisters. Understand where we're coming from and where we're going. There is more than meets the eye. Yes, we have to address and be the, the needs of hunger and food insecurity in this world. We must do what God has called to do now. But we also must not be oblivious to what is also taking place behind the scenes. And if there's anybody on planet Earth that should be vigilant, watching and praying and asking God for the spirit of discernment, it should be us as Advent believers. So, look at that. Just, you ask, what does health have to do with it? Everything. Thank you very much. You got your answer. So, as we see really quickly here, the heart of the health message is this, relationship, the four R's. You ready? If you, if, if you don't remember anything, maybe you'll remember the four R's there. Relationship, Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, God wanted togetherness. I'm not trying to knock, I'm not trying to overuse or shall we say abuse the pandemic as an example, but I have to use it because it's the most recent example. We experience a lack of togetherness during the pandemic. 
The quarantine and isolation separated us for a period of time. God never intended for us to live and to worship in isolation or separation. But this was God's ideal relationship. Ready? Then the next one is responsibility. Do you see it? Responsibility. Genesis 1, 28. The purpose of living. God gave us a purpose to live. Then there was renewal. Genesis 1, 28. Nourishment and best choices. The plant-based diet that God introduced us to. And then finally, restoration. The likeness of God. He created us in His image and likeness. So what does health have to do with it? It has to do with God recreating in us His image and likeness. Restoration of His image. That's what health has to do with it. Mind, body, and spirit. See, God formed us. Sin deformed us. But salvation through Christ transforms us. That's what health has to do with everything. It's about restoring the image of God in us. Isn't that what the end goal of being a Christian is? To be more like Him? I mean, when Jesus comes, what is He coming for? He's not coming to check your bank accounts. He's not coming to see how much you've amassed and accumulated. He's coming to save those who reflect, resemble, and reveal his character. That's powerful. That's the message. It's a great message. It's a powerful message. Rest, relationship, responsibility, renewal, restoration, and here's the fifth R in the middle. What is that? Rest. And what does it have to do with? Here's the central issue. Are you ready for it? Remember, worship and spiritual health. What is going to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest issue in the last days? What is it? Allegiance to God, loyalty to God, worship. Whose side will you be leaning on? Whose side will you be kneeling on? The heart of the health message. Maybe you never saw it that way. God inspired me and, and revealed this to me in prayer and study to connect the dots. Growing up, because that's all I heard about one aspect of health, but to see the deeper dimensions of what does health have to do with it. It is unbelievable. It's amazing. It's fascinating. I'm hoping that you can catch that same vision today as we get ready to land the plane. So we go to the scripture that was read for us, and I want to highlight one verse here in Exodus chapter 17. It's found in Exodus chapter 15, rather which was read for us, Exodus chapter 15. And I want to just summon your attention to uh, verse 25. Oh, sorry, no, verse 26. Exodus 15, verse 26. This is another sermon all by itself, but I'm not going to touch that because we don't have time for that. But I want to highlight a scripture. I want to accentuate verse 26, and it says, If... Thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and will do that which is right in his sight. I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I have brought upon the Egyptians for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Jehovah Rapha. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Did you know what some of the diseases of the Egyptians were? The wise man says, there is nothing new under the sun. Medical examination, post-mortem autopsies found that when they went to, of course, examine the, some of the mummies and the remains, they found that some of these pharaohs and those that were buried there, they had high levels of cholesterol, atherosclerotic plaque in their arteries, Rich foods, rich, high in fat and high in sugar, high in sodium. The same lifestyle diseases then existed, but they didn't have enough publicity. There's no CNN and Fox back then, right? So, so, so it was there. Is there anything you understand? We see at the turn of the 20th century, 1900s, the diseases, the chronic conditions. And look what's happening today in the 21st century. It comes back, it boils down to, if we say fundamentally, what is it? Lifestyle. God gave us this comprehensive health vision through our church pioneers on health, on lifestyle, 
Should we not take it back? Should we not take back our health? Do you want to take back your health? Well, I hope you come back this afternoon at 4 p.m. We'll talk a little bit more about it on a more practical level. But understand the comprehensive sweep today by the grace of God. Understand how important health is, mind, body, and spirit. There's more than meets the eye. It's not just about being perfectly fit physically, mentally, but it is holistically. And then some, the implications that health has on our life, on our church, on where we are in the stream of time. The test will come again like it did to Daniel and the three Hebrew worthies. It will come to every believer, to every soul, to each one of us. And the question is, what will we do? How shall we stand? This message is to prepare your hearts for that because it's coming and looming on the horizon. As I close today's message, I'm skipping through. As I said, I'm never out of uh, content, just out of time. But here it is. I, wanna, I want to leave with you something really quickly here. Ellen White wrote this. Marvelous will be the transformation wrought in him who by faith opens the door of the heart to the Savior. Such transformation enhances the use of common sense to follow the basic principles of life, the laws of health. And we've heard about it, you know, the eight laws of health. We'll talk more about it this afternoon, but we'll put a little bit more contextual information and content there. And so I want to land the plane here and tell you about my uncle, Pastor Paul Ramboros. Uh, Pastor, Pastor Paul, my uncle, served in the Caribbean. He hailed from the beautiful island of the hummingbird, Trinidad and Tobago. Is anybody here from Trinidad and Tobago? Yes, brother. Yes, Elder Wendell Phipps, I see you. And uh, he served for over 60 years. Can you believe it? He was in charge of the publishing work, literary evangelism. I had heard about this legend when I was a child. And I never met him until years later until I studied. I met his son, who was also a pastor. Uh, and he told me about his father, and I got to know him. And eventually, in my earlier years of ministry, I had the privilege of traveling to Trinidad to visit him, conducting a week of prayer at the University of the Southern Caribbean. And he met me at the airport when I arrived. He was tall and upright walking like a thoroughbred. He was, at that time, 94 years old. He took me to his home. He fed me. I said, what's for lunch, uncle? I called him uncle. He said, oh, it's going to be some whole grain roti and some vegetables from the garden and all that. His wife had died just about a year or two before. And uh, I said, okay, do you have to order and pick it up? Oh, he says, no, I prepared it from my backyard. It's all at home, ready for you. So I got there, and he, uh, he sat me down. We prayed as his custom was, and, and we caught up a little bit, and he ate, you know, thoroughly. He masticated his food 32 times, whatever, you know, just slow eater. But you could, he was slim and trim. He's 94 years old. And I'm like, he picked me up at the airport, and he's dry. I'm like, he still has his license? Wow. So, so, so we get, and every day without fail, he would come to visit me at the university where I was conducting the week of prayer. And, um, and, and after that, that first lunch, he took me back home because he says he has a tree that bears mangoes perennially. I mean, I mean, this is amazing. Usually mango season is from, what, June to August or something like that. He had a mango tree. It was like, I would almost, I was calling it, oh, God is giving you a little sample of the tree of life. This mango tree bore air all year round. And, and, and he gave me, uh, uh, of course, mangoes for the whole week and all that. But, but here, here's an interesting story. We went to visit a family member who was not well. And that day, uh, there was no meeting. I think it was a Thursday. So no meeting. And so we went, and it was raining cats and dogs. I know, you know when it rains, it pours. And it's in the, in the tropics, it is, oh, you can't even see anything. Just like, you know, you've seen experience here. But it is rough in the tropics and tropical regions of the world. And here he comes with his Toyota Crusader. And he is driving like a young buck, like a young man. And, of course, 
We're going up to this mountainous region. I think it's Santa Cruz. I don't know if you know that, Brother Phipps. And uh, we're going up there, and it's raining. And I said, Uncle, where, where's the defrost, the air condition? He pulls out his handkerchief and says, Son, wipe the, the windshield for me. And I'm wiping profusely. And he's driving, but we had prayed before we even started the journey. And he was holding on to the steering wheel like a young, and going in a deliberate direction. And we got there safely. When we got there, the rain stopped. And he began to tell me his life story. Told me how, from a child, his mother introduced him to a plant-based diet. The laws of health. And he was preparing to become a minister. And how he lived his life for the last 94 years. And every day he would come to pray for me, I'll never forget. He was, of course, slim and trim. And his voice was not as robust and strong, but he would lay his hands on me and pray with me before I presented the Word of God. And I felt so blessed for his example. Long story short, the week was over. I gave him a big hug and kiss. I said, thank you, Uncle, for taking care of me and loving me this week. You are an example to me. Thank you for inspiring me in ministry. He lived a plant-based life. He lived to be 101 years old. The government of Trinidad and Tobago, through the Prime Minister's office, present, gave him a a special medal for reaching the centennial celebration of 100 years as a centenarian. And unfortunately, at the time, I couldn't make it back to the memorial service. And my heart was heavy. But he left an example of what it means to walk with God spiritually and physically. His lifestyle, this plant-based diet. And I'll never forget it. And he died naturally of old age. And I'm not saying that, you know, there are times when things happen to us. We might do our very best, but we still contract a sickness, a disease, or disorder. And that's all right. That is not God's punishment. Let me just make that very clear. But if we, by the grace of God, hearken, as the Scripture says, do our very best to align our lives and our lifestyle to God's will and purpose and plan for our lives, He promises to, to bless us we do live in a world of sin. And things are broken all around. We're broken, but thank God for His healing grace. How many of you want more of God's grace in your life? Yes, and I believe that our health lifestyle is every part of the three angels' message. And sorry, he lived to be 102. I apologize. 102. And our health message is every part of who we are, our identity. So what does health have to do with it? Everything. May God bless you, mind, body, and spirit, that we will strive for the mastery so that we can experience the best of health today, tomorrow, and when Jesus comes, He will put away all of the sickness and diseases. For says the Scripture in Revelation chapter 21, verse 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more Death, no sorrow, no crying, for the former things will be passed away. May that day come soon. If that's your heart's desire, you believe it, and you're striving for it by the grace of God, and you open your heart to receive it, I invite you to stand to your feet with me as we close our service today. We are so thankful to be a part of the family of God and to know that we all can make it to the kingdom if we follow God's direction and God's will. So let us sing, Family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of Say brother and sister around here 
it's because we're a family and these are so near when one has a heartache we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear i'm so glad i'm a part of the family of god i've been Gracious Father in heaven, great and awesome God, how marvelous is your unfailing love to each one of us. Because you love us, you also want us to be healthy. We thank you for the powerful help message delivered to us this morning. May you give us uh, wisdom and empower us to live a healthy lifestyle so that we may indeed have a healthy body, mind, and spirit. Now to our beloved congregation, may the strength of God sustain you. May the power of God preserve you. May his hand protect you. May his way direct you. And may his love goes with you now and forever. Amen.